Electromagnetic Induction Applications. This is supplemental material and is not covered on the AP exam. Electric motors operate using the concepts of current generating a magnetic field and electromagnetic induction. Current is supplied to the copper windings in the rotor, right here, and that will be generating a magnetic field. Also, this current flows with another magnetic field created by the permanent magnet. That field exerts a magnetic force that spins the rotor. And that comes from this equation here, F is equal to ILB. Right? Magnetic force, magnetic field, times the current. The motor allows for a continuous rotation of the rotor so it can drive wheels, pulleys, turntables, CD players, vacuum cleaners, and any other device that needs to rotate. Now we'll discuss some applications of electromagnetic induction. First will be the generator, and that looks like a motor, which is why we started this topic off with the motor, but it's run backwards, and we'll tell you what that means in a few seconds here. And the ground fault circuit interrupter, very important for electrical safety in the home, especially near water. Motors and generators have been around for a long time. Compare this picture, which we've had on the previous couple slides, with the schematic drawing from Popular Science Monthly, Volume 56, in 1899. And here, here's your permanent magnet. It can also be an electromagnet. That's this guy here. And here's the rotor spinning around. And you can either have current in, or we're about to talk about when the current can come out, when it can be generated by a rotating rotor. What if we had an outside force that would spin the rotor? The area of the rotor perpendicular to the applied magnetic field, right, coming from here, would change. Thus, the flux would change and a current would be induced in the wires based on Faraday's law. The rotor can be spun by water hitting turbine blades attached to the rotor, in the case of hydrodynamic dams, or by steam hitting the blades. The steam can be generated by boiling water from burning fossil fuels or from the heat of a nuclear reactor. Or in the old days, you had a little attachment with a rotor that would attach to the, uh, your tires on the back of your bicycle. And when you were moving with the bicycle, that would spin the rotor and that would generate enough electricity that you could light a light in front of your bicycle. Now for the ground fault circuit interrupter. You may have seen these in your kitchen or bathroom if your power outlets have been changed in the last couple of decades. There are circuit breakers in your house's circuit breaker box, which is typically located in a basement or out of the way area. They open up the circuit if it has somehow shorted, which would put electricity through your body or start a fire in the walls. But they don't act quickly enough to stop the current flow to provide maximum safety. Ground fault circuit interrupters, abbreviated GFCI, were created to provide better safety for electrical outlets near sources of water in the home, such as kitchen and bathroom faucets, and are now required by electrical code for all new installations near water sources. They detect a possible short circuit and act much more quickly than a circuit breaker to stop the current flow through a person or wire insulation. They take advantage of electromagnetic induction to perform their life-saving role. Here's a simplified schematic of the GFCI. We'll start here, where you have the two wires that come in from the electric company that's supplying all your equipment. And that provides you electric current, and that goes into your outlets. Down at the bottom here, this is where your outlet is. This is where you would plug in your gear, such as a hair dryer or electric shaver. We have a little test switch here, just to make sure everything's working. And here's the induction part. We have this coil, of metal, very much like we started this entire unit off with, and it's just metal, and then you have wires going around it, not touching it, they're insulated wires. They go off to this switch here, and at some times they will create a current, we'll explain why that happens. That current will drive this electromechanical switch here, which will open up the circuit here and prevent this current from flowing to the hair dryer, or if there's a short somewhere from flowing into you or somewhere else in the house. Here are the functions again. We have L and N are the two household wires that provide a supply and return path for the current from the power utility. So this is typically called the hot lead, and that'll come down like here, 
then there'll be another current going in this direction, returning it to the power company. Number one is your electromechanical switch. That will open these switches here that will interrupt the current flow. That happens when you have a current flowing in the secondary loop here. And recall, please, the secondary loop is wrapped around this metal core, but it's not electrically touching it. There's insulation between it and the core. And what's the core doing? It's amplifying the magnetic field and containing it. And that magnetic field is caused by these wires. You have current flowing, you have a magnetic field. And number four, this is where we can test the device to see if the switch is working. When current is flowing normally to a hairdryer, that's the example we're using, we have the current coming down through there, comes into one plug on your hairdryer, and then leaves on the other. What do we have there? Both are generating magnetic field, but since they're in the opposite direction, the magnetic fields will be opposite, so they will cancel out. The magnetic fields go in opposite directions through the core. That's what we're looking at right in there. So their magnetic fields cancel out. With no net magnetic field, there is no change in magnetic flux. So a current will not be generated in your secondary loop over here. The problem arises when either wire L or N is cut, or if water enters the outlet where it can contact the bare wires connected within the outlet. So you could cut up here if somebody was doing improper construction work and didn't pay attention to where the wires were inside the wall, or maybe there's something wrong with the hair dryer, so this wire, instead of connecting to the rotor, maybe breaks off and connects the surface of the hair dryer. And sadly, what happens then is somebody's touching it, that current will flow through the person into the ground. So you'll still have current flowing here, generating a magnetic field, but there's no current being returned. So this magnetic field could possibly increase if you're drawing a lot more current. And over here, there's no magnetic field generated. It goes to zero. So what's going to happen now? This changing magnetic flux, and why did that happen? Well, the magnetic field, the net magnetic field in the beginning was zero. But now it's going to a value because you still have this wire generating the magnetic field no magnetic field over here, so it's not canceling anything. So what happens? Changing magnetic flux. What does that do? A changing magnetic flux within the metal core induces a current in our secondary circuit here. The current activates the electromechanical device that opens a switch and the current stops flowing. And all of this business is incorporated into that little GFCI outlet. So it's canceling the circuit right at the source of where your plug is. This protects life and property.